This video is a quick follow-up to my last video on creating a Solidify node. I got a few comments that gave me some new ideas. This time, it has an offset option, much like the Solidify modifier does. So let's jump right into it. Instead of applying a single extrude modifier, and then filling the hole that's left at the bottom, but this time, we're gonna add two extrude nodes and have them extrude in opposite directions. So let's add those nodes now. And then we rejoin them together. Of course, right now they're doing the exact same thing. As before, we'll wanna drive our offset scale from our input. And we want our input socket to be a distance socket. So we need to connect it to a node with a distance value in it first. I tend to just use the mesh primitive cone for this and plug in to the radius top. Delete this and then rename radius top to thickness. We'll plug thickness into the offset scale. Now, of course, both of these are doing the same thing. So we want this bottom one to actually go in the opposite direction. We can do that by just multiplying the thickness by negative one. Since we're extruding the same value in two different directions, we're actually getting twice this thickness. So we're gonna wanna divide this thickness by two before we send it to our extrude meshes. So I'll join these lines and divide by two. Since we'll wanna be able to control our selection, we'll plug into that. And we also wanna be able to turn on and off individual. We'll clean up a little bit here. Next, let's take a look at our face orientation. We'll do that using the overlay panel and turning on face orientation. You can see that our downward extrusion has its normals facing in the wrong direction. Before we join this up with the top extrusion, we simply want to flip the faces. After we've joined them together, we'll want to remove doubles. We'll do that with a merge by distance node. Since we're extruding in both directions, we're going to leave our thickness so that the minimum value is zero. That way, we don't have to deal with flipping all of the faces if we use a negative thickness. The next thing we want to add is an offset so that our original mesh can be in the middle of the extrusion, at the bottom, or the top. So let's think for a moment. If this is our mesh, and we've extruded in this direction and this direction, at this point, our offset would be zero because it's even on both sides. If instead, our mesh is here at the bottom and we've only extruded up, that would be an offset of one. And if our mesh is here at the top and we've only extruded down, this would be an offset of negative one. So what we need to do is scale the top and bottom extrusions based on this offset. So if the offset is zero, we would extrude half the distance to the top and half the distance to the bottom. If you think about how we divided the distance in half before sending it to the top and bottom, this is what our node currently does. However, if our offset is one, we want the full distance to go to the top and none of the distance to go to the bottom. And if our offset is negative one, we want none of the distance to go to the top and all of the distance to go to the bottom. I'm sure there's a couple of different ways you could achieve this but the simplest one I thought of was using a map range node, actually two of them. So let's get rid of this divide node and let's add in a map range node. We'll connect a new socket up to the value. Now we've already said the value of the offset goes from negative one to positive one. Looking back at our chart here, when the offset was negative one, we wanted nothing to go to the top and when it was one, we wanted everything to go to the top. So here we map when the minimum is negative one, the minimum output is zero. When the maximum is one, the output maximum is one. So now we just need to multiply our thickness by this amount. And we'll plug that into our offset scale. We'll also wanna make sure that our value socket has a minimum value of negative one and a maximum value of one. And we'll put the default at zero. Now we can do the same thing for the bottom. We'll take our map range down here, plug in the value, and then we said when the value was negative one, the output value for the bottom would be one. And when the offset was one, the bottom would get nothing. So we can take our multiply node, 
multiply our map range, but we'll need to make sure we plug this into our multiply by negative one in order to keep it flipped. So let's look at what we've got. We'll set our thickness to one meter and we'll look at this from the side. With the offset at zero, we go half a meter down and a half a meter up. If we shift the value up to one, we see it goes now from here all the way up here. And if we shift it to negative one, it goes down like this. If we split this and bring it up and turn off individual, we can go from here to here to here. So now not only can you solidify a mesh, you can say which direction that solidify goes. And that direction can be driven by an offset factor. Now all we have left to do is give this node a name and mark it as an asset. We would simply need to save this into one of our asset library folders to be able to add it later on. So I hope you can get this node implemented on your own and that you use it in your upcoming projects. As always, I hope I'm inspiring you to make something awesome. And until next time, I'll catch you later.